Okay, here's where we left off. We've created two React components, channel and channel list, which are being used in a parent-child relationship to render a hard-coded list of channels. Let's think back to the app we intend on building. And looking at the wireframe drawing, you can see that the user should be able to key a new channel into an input, and pressing enter should add what they keyed as a new channel. So let's figure out how to handle this in React. Let's add an additional component that we'll call channel form. This component will render a form with a text input where we can key a new channel and press enter, after which the channel name we keyed should get added to our list of channels. We'll create our channel form component just as we did with the channel and channel list components, declaring our class channel form that extends react.component. Then we'll create a render method that returns a simple form tag with a single input tag of type text. Now we've got more to do on the channel form, but before we fully implement the channel form, let's consider where the channel form should be placed in our current structure. Now looking back to the wireframe drawing, we have the form placed below our list of channels. At this point, a beginning React developer may be tempted to simply place our channel form tag after the channel list component in our reactdom.render function. Let's try that and see what happens. Now let's save the file and refresh the page. Well, it didn't work. Let's look at the console to see if we can gain any insight into what the problem is. The error we see is, adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Essentially what this means is that we can only pass a single parent element or parent React component to be rendered. Of course there can be many child components of the parent. This actually makes sense if we consider what's really happening with our JSX elements in the transpiling step. Each JSX element, whether HTML or a React component, is converted to a function call. So passing two function calls as the first parameter doesn't really make sense. To better emphasize this, let's comment out the reactdom.render line. Then instead of passing JSX, we'll write the pseudocode that the JSX will be transpiled into. Essentially, our first JSX for the channel list component will get converted to react.createElement with the relevant parameters, and then the JSX for the channel form component will get converted to another call to react.createElement with its relevant parameters. Obviously, passing two function calls as the first parameter is nonsense. Okay, so what can we do? Well, essentially, we need to only pass a single element or component that contains our child components. A couple of choices are wrapping these in a div or we could make one more component as a parent component that will contain all the child channel components. Let's choose the latter of these two choices, creating a React component which we'll call channel section. You'll understand why we're choosing this option in a few moments. So let's create a class channel section, extend react.component, then we'll create a render method that returns a div, and inside the div we'll include the channel list and the channel form. Now let's change the code for the reactdom.render to now render the single channel section component. Let's save our file, then we'll refresh the page, and it renders our channel form, as well as our channel list and our channel components. Earlier I mentioned the term controller view. Well, our newly created channel section component will kind of act as our controller view. Essentially it's the highest level common ancestor component, which makes it a good place to maintain application state. In our example, the only state we're maintaining is the channels array, but it's not currently being maintained as formal state as defined by React. Here's the problem with the way things are set up currently. React isn't really watching or concerning itself with our channels array. React uses the array initially to render our channels, but that's about all React does with it. So for example, if we modified our array, as things are set up currently, React wouldn't render those changes for us. However, with a few simple changes to our app, we can store our channel array in our application state, and React will automatically render the changes as appropriate. We'll see how to do this in the next video.